Alright guys, what's up? I got a special video for y'all today. We, I'm going to take you guys with Brian Little and take you guys on a behind the scenes look at Sabine Skiffs. Let's go inside. What's up, Brian? What's going Ready? On, yeah. Let's Show do us it. a little bit behind the scenes at Sabine. Yeah, let's do this. We'll walk through the rig shop. I'll, actually, I'll put my, uh, my earplugs away. Let's <laughs> go through here. This is our Kayla's uh, office, my office. Uh, she manages our C Deck uh, company out of this office. She has salesmen behind the closed door because we're bothering them. CAD department right here. This is where we uh, kind of bring in our customers, do some, give them some hats, show them some merch, let them sit down, go over quotes. Alright, so this is air conditioned, heated shop, clean floors, it gets dirty, and we'll talk about the pre-rigging. But this is where we bring in our skiffs right after aluminum fab shop. We pre-rig them, and then after paint, we bring them over here, and then we get final wiring, and uh, motors and rigged and things like that. Alright, we're going to do a little walkthrough of this river skiff. This is dark gray. This paint we use is uh, Allcraft 2000. It's got a Minn Kota removable trolling motor mount. This is getting full C deck, so we do pucks underneath our casting platform, and we pre-scan this boat so the C deck goes around everything. And we do the puck so vibration or anything of the casting platform doesn't run the C deck. This is gas fill, always on the port side or left side of the boat because majority of your vehicles. Uh, when you're fueling up, maybe at the same time as you're fueling up your boat, fuel fill is on the same side. Gas shot door, 15 gallon fuel tank. You still got to pull up these wires because we're just in that phase of the, the rigging. You'll see the Odyssey trolling motor battery with the breaker uh, mounted in here. Six inch extended front deck with a wet sound sound bar. So these customers want to cruise down the river or while they're rowing play a little music. This boat will get removable oar locks. Uh, we're working on machining out the plastic parts for those right now. Nine inch Simrad Go 9 GPS. The removable grab bar does have motor tilt trim right here. And then this is where switches will be with the handle. Check the switches so if you step down, you're not gonna your feet or hands or anything won't catch a switch and break them. This bull handle we call it actually protects the switches. We call it the bull handle because you run this boat with a tiller arm and it's like riding a bull. So this is gonna be very good, comfortable. Sit here and run this tiller, either here with the extension sitting down, tilt trim. Stand up. We don't have to clasp and hold the door down yet. But stand up and run this boat right here. Let's walk to the back. This is a river skiff edition. So with the oars, we actually have our boards down low. We don't have the PVC uprights because the oars can catch. They, they would catch the PVC uprights loading maybe in a current situation where you have to get on the trailer real fast. So we drop the lower board on these trailers. All of our trailers come with the boat buckle style uh, winches on the transom end of the trailer. So they never leave the trailer. It's easy, it's convenient. The boat ramp back on. 
So one thing you'll see different on our river skiff versus the versatile right beside us, the river skiff has six inches more freeboard than our versatile, eight inches more than our micro. Uh, we do not have the rolled gunnels on our river skiffs. So we actually weld in a two, one by two channel along this skiff and it will get a rub rail mounted on in reverse so the rub rail will lip over the top not underneath and then we weld on this uh, three by two angle that we modify and have to cut a bunch and bend it around it's very cumbersome from our guys but this is actually your spray rail you know, while you're running heavy waters and then six inches of freeboard get your oar locks right here so you have a good ergonomically designed rogue skiff. We got a Tatsu 6040 jet mounted on this. We got a removable polling platform. So this is Vincota's heavy duty patrol motor pups that we'll put on here and they are tight but you can pull these out on both sides and then take this polling platform off. These customers are going to be pulling this boat on the coast and then up in Montana, they'll be rowing, pretty much power drifting this boat. So they might want to take this off because they will fish from the back deck as they're drifting down a uh, river and they will drift about uh, upstream. That's pretty much the uh, pretty much the gist of this river skip. Uh, we got two versatiles right here. We got a center console one, bare aluminum and pre-rigging stage. And then we have a painted tiller versatile that's getting rigged up right now. So while we walk through, kind of to walk through each one and maybe reference the river skip at the same time. This is getting a 12 volt rolled in, black trolling motor. We do the battery tender quick releases. All we use for our trolling motor, electrical quick release. We got a 10 inch flashlight, spot, fl spot flood. Spotlight. It's also removable when you move a, a casting platform. And he's got his battery in here. This skiff has a extra wide tiller pod console. It's right at the, the width of his Yeti 65 quart cooler. Uh, when you spin around here a little bit, Peter, you'll see this will have a 12 inch GPS, two cup holders. You gotta get the full handle right here with access to trim tabs tilt trim and jack plate. His five switches will be here for you know your bilge, nav lights, cockpit lights, his bow spotlight, fuel gauge, and all bolted wires will be run in the tubes down through the floor channels into the rigging stage. This skiff is also getting Lenco trim tabs up here with tilt trim and jack plate switches. So you can run this skiff while these up top sit down, run the skiff while he's running up here, or run his skiff while standing at the pod console. So, super custom, tall hull, 50 Tahatsu, Yeti tan hull, matches his Yeti cooler with the dark gray powder coat. He opted for a 12 inch extended front deck, but it does not have a speaker bar. But if you're sitting on the cooler, you can put your fly boxes and different gear right here for a soft cooler. And this skiff, pre-rigging it, this one's going to the Panhandle area of Florida. It's gonna have a Mercury 60R. You got a tunnel hall. Already got a pre-rig for the jack plate. You're gonna have a Bob six inch jack plate. Center console, a little unique design with this grab bar and this flat system. Basically, what he wants is this big balls out GPS holder. This big GPS will be bolted in. So it's going to hide back behind his unit right here. And when he wants to fish to see where he's at, he can flip it around and basically flip this thing and see it forward. So, guys are working on all that, getting that laid out right now. This gentleman. This skiff will go to paint sometime next week. Go home in a couple months. We have his polling platform right here. 
This will get powder coated. This foam platform has a removable the lean bar system. This casting platform has the same thing, which you can go from the front or the back, which most people put it on the back because they just want to lean. At this stage, we usually show photos uh, with the customer with the platforms on, how everything sits. And this is where we finalize paint and see that colors. Um, these days with COVID delays, we try to do paint and see that colors a month ahead of this, say when we start to skip and fab, but this is the end all be all. And I want to show you all something back here. I mean, we're a small company, it's small. This is just our rig shop, very small facility. But all these motors, I got Mercury 60R, Mercury 60R, Mercury 60R, Mercury 60R. Hot 260, 6040 jet, and another motor back there that I don't even remember what it is. I had it so long. <laughs> Yamaha 70 that's going on a panga. We're working. So before COVID, when I needed a motor, which was usually about pre-rigging stage, I could order a motor and have it in a week. Now I have a list of motors ordered with the Hatsu 12 months out. Mercury. Their 60 R's are a little easier to get, but I usually order those two to three months out. So that's one of the few issues I think we're gonna talk about a little bit later, Peter, is some of the COVID delays. But yeah, let's go outside, walk around some skiffs that are waiting for C-Deck, or waiting to get pre-rigged, and then we'll go to the composite shop where we'll look at a future project, our Sabine Carbon. All right guys, we'll do a little walk through through this black versatile. It is fully done, waiting for sea deck. So in a couple weeks, when we get the sea deck on, we'll do a water trial. And then y'all will see this on our Instagram page. Typical setup of our trolling motor, fuel tank. This does have a 12 inch extended front deck. We're gonna put a charcoal Yeti 65 right here. This has a raised console. So this customer wanted to be elevated. He's gonna run the beach front for tarpon. Uh, plus back lakes, pulling his son around for redfish. You got uh, Latham racing controls, Simrad 9 inch GPS, light bar, good, nice, comfortable setup. We'll have a cushion. It's coming out of upholstery this week. So he can sit back, run this, and I'll let y'all look at our rigging. Rig shop, none of this is really done. As you can see, have our finished rigging set up in here with the power pole. So you got your Odyssey cranking battery, battery on and off switch, uh, battery breaker, and then this is all the fuse panel and everything labeled. This skiff has the Mercury 60R, tunnel hull, jack plate, got a custom Bauman propeller coming for it. It'll be ready this next week. Four foot power pole, also blacked out. So this one's gonna be a looker, gonna be a heater. And then right behind it, this skiff just got out of paint. This is medium gray by All Grip on the deck in a custom color that we had matched. We're calling it, they, the customers actually gave me a, a sample and they came up with a name, but we come up with Sabine Brine Green. So it's almost like a sea foam, but it's a little different. Gray deck, all the platforms will be anodized on this skiff with a black uh, backrest. So all of the steering wheel pop-up cleats will all be polished. This will get a Tahatsu 60 horsepower motor. That power plant is one of the ones we pointed out earlier. So this one's gonna be uh, ready to roll. As soon as we get a river skiff out, we'll uh, move this one in later this week to early next week, start working on this one. So, yeah, you ready? Yeah, man. All right, let's go to the composite shop and take a look at the mold process of the carbon. All right, guys, so we got to see the rigging shop, and now Brian's going to show us something super special, project he's been working on. Take it away. All right, guys, this is our composite skiff we've been working on for a little over a year. Uh, the composite industry is something I wanted to get in years ago. It just fell into the aluminum skiffs first. So once we got the aluminum skiffs up and running, we're going to go ahead and start our composite shop and this is we're gonna start that division with an 18 foot versatile we took our aluminum versatile skiff we stretched the transom six inches and made the bottom of the boat two inches wider 
And we did that to handle the Mercury 60R weights and the Yamaha F70. And then, if you want a Tahatsu 60, you're going to be even better. You have more buoyancy. Uh, this will be a hundred percent carbon, or so it won't be a hundred percent carbon fiber skiff, probably be about 98 percent carbon fiber. There will be some Anegra in the bottom of the hull also. We're looking at epoxy resin, vacuum infusion. So really high tech, you know, really looking forward to it. We have a hull mold done, which we'll show you all over there. We're getting the stringer mold uh, done right now, show you that phase. This is the five axis routered deck plug that is finished. We'll be making a mold off of this in about a week and a half. So all of our hull, our deck, console, deck lids, and a bunch of small parts were five axis routered off of 3D drawings that I worked with off of my 2D drawings. So let's go through this uh, deck real quick. So the deck is very similar layout to our aluminum skiffs. We still have the fuel fill here. We move the pop-up cleat forward and then we will have a threaded pull right here for your casting platform tie down. Made the front deck lid a couple inches larger so we can hold a larger tank if you do want something larger than a 15 gallon fuel tank. We extended the front deck six inches, or sorry, three inches, and we move the rear deck forward six inches because these will be predominantly uh, console skips. Speaking of consoles, this is our center console that mold or plug that we're about to make a mold off of. I'm not going to unravel it. We'll show that when we show the whole skid together. But we have a nice non-skid pattern already done. Uh, this part is actually already being waxed uh, because we are going to be making a mold here in the next couple weeks. These are the lids for the deck. We still have a similar tub design of our versatile and our micro uh, rear decks but we did make this a little bit wider and then a little bit what bigger and a little bit deeper so it's a big storage area still no live well and then you will see in the plug which you'll see later when we make the part we built these molds to be able to handle a 15 inch 20 inch shaft tunnel hole or non-tunnel so we'll go over that once we get a skiff built i'll show you all more of that first Walk over here. These are five axis routed plugs. These are going to be carbon fiber door and then the carbon fiber door gasket uh, area for the console. So that will also be carbon fiber. This, that's all taped off, has a bunch of paper on it, is the actual mold for the hull. Uh, it has a part in it. And what we did after we made the part, we tooled up our stringer grid, which we're in the process of making a mold for the stringer grid. And uh, this is why I look dirty and holes in my pants. I actually welded up this frame this morning, which we just started glassing it on. So tomorrow we should be able to pop this mold off the stringer grid plug. And then within a week or two, we'll lay up our first stringer grid. Um, Estimating that to weigh around 20 pounds, this hole right now uh, on calculations was designed to be 142 pounds and it actually came out to be 145 pounds. And that is unbonded, no structures and no bulkheads. But uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna hit our goal weights. I'm not gonna tell you what those are, but our hole does only weigh less than 150 pounds without string or grid with a 20 pound string of it. And our deck might weigh under 50 pounds. So y'all can do some math there and kind of see if some weights were coming out. Um, the main two plugs that we have left once we make our first hull part is our cockpit. So I'm gonna have to set the hull part on here and we'll tool out our cockpit. And then we will actually have a mold for our front bulkhead and floor of our storage area lift the front deck lid, you'll see an actual carbon fiber part in there where the fuel tank is. We're a little behind schedule. COVID delays, what can you say? Uh, the labor force just wasn't there this year, but yeah, we have plenty of them to build. I'm not gonna say how many, but I'm not worried about sales. Um, I'm looking forward to getting this skiff on the water. 
I'm gonna get the first one. It's gonna be a non-tunnel 60R build, uh, Mercury 60R. And then Owen Gaylor is getting the second one, which will, second skid, which will be the first tunnel hole. And uh, he's gonna help me run it down in Port O'Connor. So we're looking forward to getting those two skips on the water. And then from there, I have several other ones to build that are gonna be spread from Texas, Louisiana, all the way to the East Coast. So looking forward to this, uh, growing this division of the company. Yeah. So stay tuned. I'm looking forward to coming back. Yeah, you got any questions about any materials or anything we're doing here? Anything I can really tell you? I know we talked about some stuff. <laughs> we talked about some stuff. No, it's it's cool to see. Like it's definitely a process. It's, it's cool a big, to it's see a, big process. a little bit behind the scenes. Yeah. So a lot of people don't realize, but even our aluminum skiffs, I drew those 2D, and that's easy the way we make them to draw 3D, and then we make templates, and then put the skiff together. I took my 2D drawings to a naval architect in Florida, sat behind him and his desk for a week, and we made a 2D drawings 3D, and then we five axis routered these parts. Uh, and then you, you know, you might spend 40, 50 grand on a hull, and then when you're done with it, you just throw it away and you cut it up and you put it in a dumpster because you don't want anybody to steal your plug. But, yeah. A lot of time, a lot of money. Yeah. And a lot of sacrifice going into these. Um, very confident in this hole design. Has our reverse chines. Does have a variable dead rise. It's not zero degrees at the transom. It's uh, going to be somewhere around one degree. So it is built for shallow water. Um, not going to be a speed boat by all means, but it will be pretty quick, being that it's a little bit lighter uh, than our aluminum boats. So, yeah. Be a fun one. It will be available in center console, uh, side console, and even our flat side console. Dude, I can't wait. I can't wait. I know. I know when I when I first saw that they were that you guys were doing this, I got super excited. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. And hopefully, uh, we'll talk you out of the run. There you go. Yeah, we get this one done. We'll we'll definitely be uh, hitting the whole Texas coast and showing them. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, be good skiff for our market. Sweet. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you so much for letting us see a little bit behind the curtain on Sabine. Um, if you guys haven't, make sure you're following Sabine. Check out the skiffs. If you're interested in them, talk to Brian. Any questions you have, he'll walk you through the whole process. I know when I was getting mine built, probably was on the phone way too much. Just got a customer from Florida text me right now. I've seen him a video of his skiff. So. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's how we do it. You're gonna deal with me through the whole process, from quoting to billing to building. Yeah, so. I was I was on a ship with a terrible sat phone connection, getting my colors designed, C deck designed. So I appreciate that. Uh, and then lastly, guys, if you haven't already, hit like, hit subscribe, check out Sabine Skiffs on Instagram, website www.sabineskiffs.com. See y'all next time.